do it. Welcome to The Real Build. I'm your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I got a special guest coming from Milford, Pennsylvania. He provides award-winning custom hardscapes, installations, excavation, and masonry, including walkways, patios, paver driveways, retaining walls, swimming pools, outdoor kitchens, and other outdoor retreats, which I'm excited to talk about today. His company, Anthony Group Hardscapes, services areas throughout northern New Jersey, the Pocono region of PA, and upstate New York. With over 25 years in business and 35 years in the construction industry, his company, the company continues to grow at a rapid pace. Anthony, welcome to The Real Build, man. How are you doing today? Bill, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I'm actually excited to have you on. I've been trying to hit, hit these little niche, niche spots that, uh, you know, I haven't had on the show, you know, one, a couple of weeks ago, I had concrete on and I've had a trailer builder on and uh, you're the first hardscape guy. So I'm excited to talk some hardscape with you. You're doing some amazing projects. See it on your social media, man. So excited to have you on. I appreciate the time and I appreciate you, uh, you know, going into my industry. Not a lot of people talk about this industry. So, um, to be able to get out here, put it out there and uh, recognize it a little bit is an honor. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Your industry is more important than any, I mean, everybody knows how important your industry is. I deal with it in the construction custom home because outdoor living is where it's at. And especially, you know, up North right now, obviously a lot of people leave here for the summers and uh, spend a lot of time outdoors. And then down here in the winter, they're always outside too. So uh, you're doing some creative things, excited to talk about it, but we getting started i always like to talk about who you are so who is anthony mann jr uh, i'm uh was born in northern new jersey i'm 46 years old uh father to an amazing uh 15 year old son anthony um have uh, elizabeth in my life she's been with me for 20 years supportive um i got two great supportive parents uh and i have a sister older sister um and uh that's it's really it. I'm just a kind of normal, average, uh, average guy that uh, gets up at five thirty, six a.m. in the morning and goes to work. <laughs> like most of us, right? <laughs> That's it. You know, nothing special here. Yeah, I mean, and you obviously. One thing I always like to kind of get into, though, is how did you fit? How did you get into construction? Like, you know, out of everything, how did that path lead into that? uh, into landscape, obviously growing up, did you have, did you, were you involved in it or was it just something that kind of sprung up that you're like, Hey, we need this. This is a necessity in the area I'm in. How'd you get into it? Uh, well, I'm a third generation Mason contractor. Oh, nice. Uh, my grand, my grandfather, uh, came from Italy and built churches in masonry nice. churches in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, my father was a builder, slash me more of a builder uh but did his own masonry um he was also an operating engineer so in the construction uh building highways bridges roads um <clears throat> i started when i was eight cutting lawns in the neighborhood going around trying just to make a couple bucks um one thing i remember my mother when i was a young kid said uh you can be anything you want own the company you want to be a garbage man that's fine own the company um so being an entrepreneur was kind of in my blood. Um, and I took off running with it. Uh, <clears throat> took that long company. Oh, so I was about a junior senior in high, uh, when I was a junior in high school, I was actually going to school with my pickup truck and the mowers on. So I could leave school and go right to out, get to work, get these things done. Um, went off to a local community college, uh, for landscape design and construction management, uh, so I could still work. I had already had a, you know, pretty, um, successful thing going. So why would I want to go away? I was going to go away and play football. Um, but I didn't, um, I went to, I went and sold the lawn end of the business, um, and got into the more of the pavers. Um, my father was very good. We we're family friends with a company, uh, who in 1983, started the first paving stone company in new jersey uh, mm -hmm. manufacturing company um 
So my house, my father's house, his pool was the in 1984, 1983, 1984 was the third house to have paving stones put down uh, in northern New Jersey. Um, and they didn't have hardscapers and they had masons um, and they didn't have saws. They didn't have much technology. It was very bare bones. I remember being a really young kid uh, out there helping the masons put these bricks in. Um, so it just it was a passion for me. Um, it was I was around it. Um, I had access to the materials way back in the day. Um, that company had helped me get some leads, uh, kind of helped me get going in the hardscape end of it. Uh, the masonry just came, came to me naturally. Yeah. And going like starting on your past. So too, and it's, it's crazy how I, I, I can relate with you quite a bit growing up, obviously, you, you know, I did different businesses and stuff like that to make some money. I, and I worked in the family business, uh, doing construction and so on. I, I played football as well. I remember I've talked about this after football practice, I was ready to go to work to a construction site and start working. <laughs> That's how my old man was. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, everybody else would kind of go do their thing, have fun on the weekends, whatever. I'd end up having to go to work and, you know, out in hot Florida sun and the humidity after uh, being out in the Florida sun and, and football practice. So, you know, there was no breaks, but it, it led me up to where I am today. I have a big time appreciation for the construction business and, and I learned so much by doing that and obviously having to work and put in those, those hours and so on as well. I mean, just like you with the lawn company starting from there and then that leading to the path that you're on today, you know, you had that initial business from there, you went to the paver and hardscapes and the Mason and so on. And, and it's, it's developed into something special now too, because of that experience that you had. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, I remember Saturday morning, seven o'clock, getting up, going to work with that. There was, there was, you know, and if I wanted to go out and hang out with my friends at night, I suffered the next day at work, you know, yeah. and I had to make that decision. <laughs> um, I also was fortunate, um, Growing up, my father was also an operating engineer. And when I was about 23, 24, I had the opportunity. Um, so I, I had gotten rid of the, the first business I had, and I uh, became a, uh, an equipment operator, uh, worked for some of the biggest companies in the country. Um, but I really got a vast knowledge of how the commercial uh, construction world worked. Um, I've worked, you know, 200, 250 foot underground in tunnels, uh, all the way to 850 oh. foot up in the air running, uh, high rise, uh, high rise tower cranes. Um, wow. and you know, 500 ton, uh, crawler cranes on the ground. Um, that was an experience. I was actually on a Saturday doing a side job because that's just in my DNA. Uh, and when I was putting the straps that go around the pavers uh, in a garbage bag, they sprung back and went through my eye. Uh, oh, I had wow. to have a corneal transplant done. Um, and that day they took my uh, crane license from me. Mm -hmm. um, they also took, you know, now I have trucks uh, in my fleet. I'm not even allowed to drive because uh, I can't get a medical card. Can't pass that eye exam. Um, wow. So it, it, it was, it was, it was a tough situation, but it also put me back to where my passion was uh, running the cranes, uh, doing that, that, you know, uh, bridge and tunnel work. It was a great living, um, but it wasn't a passion. Yeah. Um, the masonry, the brick, that's my passion. So there I got out of it and then it just came right back full circle. Yeah, that's, I mean, uh, that's awesome. An amazing story too. And like, like I said, we talked about too, it led to where you're at, but also like one thing that stood out to me, what you said too, is that like, I think you said your grandmother said it, that if you're going to do anything, you know, whether it's a, you know, you're a garbage man or whatever, own the business. And that, that was my mother. That was your mother. Yeah. My mother, so, yep. I mean, that, that right there, uh, stood out big time because look at you now I've, and and it is true. I mean, you have that entrepreneur bug too. It's hard to work under for somebody else and, and not be able to run something a certain way that you want it to be ran. And you going through all these experiences with, you know, what happened to your eye and so on too, has kind of led you to where you are, your passion, your true passion, which is doing the amazing outdoor hardscapes that you're doing today. Yeah, it, 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 it was a toll on me at first. Um, 
it was tough. Um, but it brought me back. Um, you know, the, the passion is there. The, the, the hardscaping is, is I can be as creative as I want. Um, I, I, and I, and I, the joy when I'm done with somebody's backyard to see that customer and how happy that they are, uh, brings a smile to them and their family gives them their family, a place to go and, and spend time together. Um, with everything going on before COVID, everybody was on the run. Everybody was on the move. Um, there wasn't a lot of family time. All of a sudden, boom, COVID hits and, and families are, are stronger now and spend more time than ever before. Mm -hmm. So to be able to create that environment to give them and for them to go out and enjoy, um, get out of the house uh, and instead of being locked in that house, get outside in their own yard um, yeah. and have that, the sound of water, um, the, the lighting experience, you know, at night sitting out there, um, it, it all just gives me that feeling that, you know, I accomplished something to make somebody really happy. Uh, and I really enjoy doing that. Yeah. And that's a difference maker with you too. It, it, I've talked about with myself in the building world, you know, the whole goal is to see that smile on their face at the end. It may not be the easiest process leading up to it. You know, all the time we try and make it as easy as possible, but the, it's a lot of work going into this. And at the end goal, the overall goal is to see that smile on that happy customer. I mean, that's what you want out of everything right there too. And the stuff you're doing, I mean, I'm sure you're busy now, especially with everybody kind of moving out of the cities and wanting some land and backyards and so on and being able to experience that and having family come together and so on and sitting outside and enjoying their time together outside is, is a great time to be in your business, I'm sure, as well. Uh, I think the Poconos has become uh, the new New York City. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're about two and a half hours. Well, no, we're about an hour and a half, uh, from New York, depending on traffic and all that. Um, but everybody has flocked from the city and has come up here. Um, so the, the building industry up here in a whole, um, has taken off. Uh, we, besides the, um, the hardscape, we also do foundation, new foundations and excavating. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we've been inundated with new foundations for new homes, um, and then we have the people that are buying homes that are just, Hey, we want, we want a space for, our, for our family to hang out, um, enjoy in the backyard. So on all fronts of all three fronts of my business, I, they've all accelerated with COVID. Um, we never shut down, uh, when everybody was kind of on lockdown, we, we kept going. Um, we couldn't afford to fall behind. We couldn't afford to not get out and go to work every day. It's just, that's in our DNA. Um, I can't sit around. Um, so when these people all started coming up um, and the people that were already here, uh, I mean, it's been a transplant place for 15, well, for years, but I've been up here 15 years now uh, coming, you know, from North Jersey. I was down in Hoboken uh, living on the waterfront for 15 years. Um, we had our child, my son, and I said, I don't want him growing up in the city. So we moved up here to the Poconos. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous mountain area. Um, and to be able to have a couple different types of businesses that, uh, service the construction industry is just an amazing, um, time for us to build, to grow, uh, and, and to create, to create a, uh, these outdoor spaces. We, we don't have much competition up here. Uh, my other markets, New Jersey and New York, it's a cutthroat bidding war, um, yeah. who can do it cheaper up here in the Poconos people want it done right uh, we have a much different freeze thaw climate up here so they're not looking for the cheapest price anymore up here they're looking for quality yeah. um, and that's what we're able to offer to our customers is, is a quality product and we stand behind it we back everything up on our projects with a five-year guarantee um, and most of our customers are lifetime customers so if they do have an issue after five years we're not charging them to fix it. We're just doing it. Um, mm. You know, we value, we value them that they come back to us and we want to make sure that they're always happy. Yeah. I love that too, because we're big time on quality and you're starting to see that shift a little bit more too, where it's not, I mean, you still got your price driven people. You're always going to have price driven people. No Absolutely. Matter what. 
you know, but uh, you're starting to see those people too, that are willing to pay the price for quality and less headaches because they've been through those headaches. They don't want to deal with them anymore. They want it done right. You know, and they want that satisfaction, that smile on their face that, yeah, okay, you got a five-year warranty, but you're, you don't, you're probably not going to have to come back much or if at, at all, you know, that's the whole goal. No, a- absolutely. A- and just to have a little compassion for your customers um, and to, to do the right, <clears throat> excuse me, to do the right thing by them. Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of how we approach every project and every new client is to just take care of them in the right way. Um, do right by them. Uh, you aren't a customer for life that way. Um, people that go around, you know, they, they do a job, they do it cheap, they do it quick. Um, that customer's only coming to them that one time. Yeah. Um, we don't advertise. We don't, you know, all of our customers are return customers or referrals from those return customers. Um, so my, the best thing I can do is, is, is just do the right thing by them. Uh, and it, it comes full circle right back to us. Um, the craftsmanship I get from my grandfather, um, he, he, like I said earlier, he built churches down in Newark, um, in Newark, New Jersey. The, the stonework, the brickwork, you don't see church, you don't see building structures built like you saw built back then. No. <laughs> um, the detail, so I try and use some of that for inspiration. Every once in a while when I'm down there, I'll just stop in front of one of them and actually look at the architecture of it. Look at the, the designs, the, how they did things then and, and bring that back into my small niche market. Um, you know, anytime we do a corner uh, on a project, it, it's a mitered 45 corner. Um, it's not just put a brick next to a brick and, and it's good. Um my guys get a little upset with what they used to. They used to be like, oh, why do we have to do that? It takes too long. Well, it's the right way to do it. Um, yeah. it, it it's the custom way to do it. And I want to be, I want to be known as the guy that does it, takes the extra minute to put that detail in every project. And we've really, the last three years have prided ourselves on that. And, and it really is amazing that the customers notice it. You put that stuff on uh, on your your social medias. Um, you take customers to see the job, and they say, "Oh, you you cut every corner here. That must have taken a lot of time. How much more is that going to cost me?" It doesn't cost that much more. It, 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 it's a little bit, but it's nothing what you think, and it shouldn't even be a question. It's the right way to do the job, uh, and that's how we go about everything. Um, you know, we want to be known as the craftsman. We want to be known, and, and there's just not enough of that anymore. Um, you know, so every once in a while, we gotta, we gotta go back to our roots. Um, and and if we do that, we keep that client, client happy. We are just gonna, you know, take this industry over. Yeah, you definitely will. It's it. And people take notice of that. I mean, believe it or not, there's, there's a lot of contractors that don't think people are going to notice these little things, but the stuff you're doing, I mean, I noticed it. I saw it on your Facebook post. I was like, yeah, he's going an extra mile right there. And, and it's such, it's a little thing that goes a long way and just makes it look that much better. And it's like you said, it's not that much money, but these, a lot of, unfortunately, a lot of customers in their heads, or maybe it was imprinted in their heads by the lazy contractor or the contract, the cheaper contractor that, oh, that's going to be expensive. We don't do that. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, you, you don't need to do that, blah, blah, blah. But by you doing these little things, these little touches, that's where you're going to stand out. We do it too. We make sure, and I showcase it in video and, and I've seen your walk, work. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I, you know, some of the, the tours of, of the finished product, it's like, okay, there's another guy doing the detail. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and I think the more that with Instagram and Facebook, the more of us that put it out there is going to make every kind, it doesn't matter what industry, but it's going to bring every contractor up just a little bit because they're mm-hmm. going to say, Hey, I want to be like that guy. And, and it's happened with me. I mean, that's, you know, Instagram has been, and I've only been on it about two years now. Um, I went on it just because my son was on it. I wanted to see what he was doing. I wanted nothing to do with social media. Um, and I'm not a technical person. I'm a get my hands dirty kind of guy. Yeah. Um, but then one day I was looking at his stuff and then a, a snow pile popped up and a, so a, an excavator popped up and I started seeing what 
the power of these social media networks could offer. Um, last year, my website was, uh, we were redoing some of my website and my website designer was like, oh, you're not on Facebook? I'm like, no. He's like, oh, you got to get on Facebook. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. He's like, no, you got to get on Facebook. And I'm like, well, okay, yeah. Well, then I just kind of ignored it. And next thing I know, he created a Facebook page. Um, I, I start getting these notifications that, oh, you were mentioned in a con and there's people in these groups like asking for recommendations and 10, 15 people going, oh, you got to call Anthony, Anthony group, Anthony Archie, mm -hmm. Anthony Archie. And I'm saying, whoa, there's something here. Uh, did one or two small promotional things, just testing the waters uh, this spring. And by April, we were booked out to November. Wow. Um, so there, any of the young guys get on it. Um, any of the old guys that don't believe in it, get on it. Um, because I, it's changed the way I look at business now. Um, but going, going back, it, it, it also showcases your work to these customers. So when the customer's making these decisions of, okay, you're just a little bit more money, but they see your work and put it next to the other guy's work. I get the job every time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, you're standing out. I mean, you're standing out more than any, and that's what people don't understand. It's a way to showcase what you do. It's the, it's you're there's, what are you going to advertise what you do in a newspaper? You know, you're not going to get in front of much eyes, but with Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all these different platforms, you have the ability to get in front of millions and millions of eyes all around the world, you know, and, and it's just crazy. And people, they want to see what you're doing. They want to see your process. They, you know, and it makes them more comfortable with hiring you before even meeting you because they're learning to trust you even before you even pick up the phone and talk to each other. You know, a lot of my videos I've sold people because they built that trust with me. If they don't like me, they're not going to go with me. I've spoke about this before too. You know, if they see a video, they don't feel like they like me. That guy, you know, he sucks. What are the, you know, he's, he's an idiot. Look at this idiot, you know, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to go with us and build with us, which is going to get rid of that waste of time. And, I, and I'm not saying people are white, but you're not going to waste that time with that specific customer. That's not going to like you because you're kind of getting that out of the way if they don't like you through your video. So you know, it helps tremendously. I, I'm a big advocate on video. I'm a big advocate on just social media in general. Uh, it's helped our business tremendously. People, even in podcasting like this, people listen to them because they want to, you know, they want to hear, they want to see, they want to you know, know what exactly you're doing. And that's your leg up. You're posting, you're doing stuff like that. And not a lot of your competition probably is yet, but the people that aren't doing it yet are getting started uh, they're going to be left in the dust, if not already, because this has been out for a long time. There's people that have been doing it for a while. Uh, and it's still social media is still pretty fresh. You can still get a leg up, but if you don't start now, yeah, it's not going to be good in the future. That's my opinion on the whole thing. Yeah. My next step is to put myself out there a little bit more. Uh, I put my work out there. Um, but I haven't introduced myself yet to the world on social media. Yeah. Um, had a conversation last week with uh, somebody who's like, look, you, you need to put yourself out there. You've got a great story. You've got a great uh, personality. Um, and I think it goes back to what you just said. I, I can put myself out of the customer's going to look at that. They're going to know who I am before I even talk to them. Um, and they're going to, they're going to either, they're going to call me or they're not going to call me yeah. when they do call me. I'm probably not bidding against anybody now because they see who I am and they say, this is the guy we want to do our project. Um, so it's something I've got to embrace, um, starting here today with you on a podcast is, uh, is a big step for me. So we're going to, you know, we're going to put this out and, uh, we're going to start putting our face out there on, uh, social media, um, start doing a little bit more communicating with the public, um, and see where that takes it's the next step in the social media world i think um that you need to people need to see who you are not yeah. just your work yeah oh yeah definitely they want to because i mean they're they're buying from you because they like you you know plain and simple that's Absolutely. the thing so with like my social media for example I'll use that example i post real life i post business i post you know dogs stuff like that which is real life it's just you do a mix of both so people can see I post this, which isn't really 
directed exactly towards my business. It's directed more towards helping people. So it's constantly showing who I am, but, and it's giving people the option if they like me or not to work with me or not. I mean, it's so important to do. And, and a lot more people are starting to take notice of how important it is because you're just, you're getting in front of so many people you know, that's the thing. It's like, uh, like you said, in these Facebook groups, uh, does anybody recommend a contractor? Oh yeah. Go check out Bill's stuff, you know, go check out RK Ryman constructions, video, his videos on this house, blah, blah, blah. They shoot them over there that they got my content. They can do, I walk them through a house just through a video without even meeting them. I get the phone call, boom, you know, we move on to the next steps. So it's, it's just, it eliminates the people that don't want to go with you or maybe they feel like they're not ready to because they can't afford to do a luxury home or, or change their backyard with yourself and do a new hardscape. But maybe in the future, they're going to do it because they see your stuff and they continuously watch it for years or a year or two. And then they're like, I got to call this guy now. I'm ready to go. So it's a long-term play too, if you think about it as well. You're playing kind of that long-term because they're seeing all your content. They're following you. And when they're ready to go, top of mind so it's amazing because i've had three or four people this year that said hey i've been following you for the you know the last year watching your work and uh you do amazing stuff um let's come on over and let's talk and those are the people that i'm not wasting my time with um they're not tire kickers they they've been Mm -hmm. watching and look and now they're ready to pull the trigger and they know what they want because they've seen it so when i go there it's not a hard sell anymore um it's hey this is we're looking at these colors we love and they show me pictures this is we love this this is this project how you did the bordering you know you did a double band instead of a single band um you know it's the the little details they they can tell me they what they want it makes my life easier as designer um you know i can get in there uh draw something up a lot quicker i'm not doing two three four renditions it's one sometimes too and we're done it and okay let's get the process going let let's uh let's order materials let's get you on the schedule um and and let's get this completed for you yeah exactly no i love that it's your spot on to talking about let's let's go into your services too let's jump back into what exactly you're doing as well uh you i mean obviously you talked about your excavating your your you know, you're doing walkways, patios, paver driveways. I said this in your intro, retaining walls, swimming pools, uh, you know, even outdoor retreats. So let's talk about your services and then let's go into your kind of process that how you come about, okay, this person comes in, they want to build a outdoor living area. Let's talk about the process with that. Just so the listener knows. Yeah, so, so our services, like you said, um, you know, we're a hardscape design build company. Um, you know, paving stones, retaining walls, um, you know, patios, the walkways, um, but it's, we enjoy doing the full backyard design makeover, uh, because that's where I think our clients get the most out of their money. Um, they get the most out of us as a company, because we just put so much heart into it. Simple sidewalk, we can all just go out and and throw a sidewalk in um but when when you're creating that area where they're gonna sit and they're gonna go read a book uh they're gonna host a party Mm -hmm. um they're gonna sit there with their with their dog and and suntan uh you know they're gonna sit by that pool uh you know we do a lot of outdoor kitchen so we're bringing people from indoors outside um letting them barbecue outside letting them do their uh their clam bakes and and lobster uh you know uh get togethers um you know those those outdoor living retreats like you said they're they're just uh i think one of my favorite of the services we offer um you know we do the excavation and we we do found and we're small on that um we we try to stick residential we used to do a lot more commercial work um but the 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 detail is not there they don't pay for the detail they don't want the detail they want quick, cheap, uh, and that's not us. So we've gone back to that residential market um, and and we'll dig a foundation. um, Then we'll pour the concrete. We'll put the block up. uh, We'll put the veneer stone on the house, the brick on the house. um, And then we can get into the, you know, uh, the outdoor living after that's done. Um, 
One thing my father taught me when I was a very, very young kid is control the water, you control the project or the job. Um, so the first thing I do when I get a call out um, and meet with the customers, I look at any water issues that, that could possibly affect this project a year from now, well, while we're under construction, a year from now, 10 years from now. Um, how are we gonna control that water? Because waters is eventually what ruins every project uh, mm -hmm. on the outdoor end of it. Um, you know, with our process, we'll, we'll take the phone call. Um, we, we are just getting into some CRM where we're, we're, you know, it used to be just a notebook, write their name down, uh, address, and just get over to the house, you know, as quickly to keep them happy. Now we're, we're trying some, some software, um, putting a database together, uh, putting information all in one place so we're able to service and give that customer a little bit more customer service. Um, but we get out on the project. Again, first thing we look at is the water. Um, then we look at the, the slopes. Um, we look at, you know, the design part of the process. So I am a, went to school for design. Um, I, I have a passion for that. I do that all hand drawing. I don't, I'm not a technical guy. Um, we had an opportunity when I was in school, you can hand draw it or you can go on AutoCAD. AutoCAD was so new. Computers were so new. I wanted nothing to do with it. My designs are all hand done, colored pencil. Um, you know, we color everything in. We give them, sometimes I have that customer that really wants that, that virtual 3D. So I send my plans off to another company. Uh, one guy, he turns that, my visions into a 3D design. Um, he did one where, I mean, he had people laying in the pool, drinking a beer, somebody <laughs> cooking on the barbecue with the smoke coming off of it in real time. Um, you know, we had an Italian themed backyard. He put Italian music to this, uh, to the video. Um, and, and that's all great, great sales tool. Not me. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I like that hand drawn, uh, let the customer see, Hey, I put time and effort into your project. I didn't just go click, click, click. Um, so you know, once we get a design done, uh, we go into the estimating process um, and material selection. Um, you know, I'm very, very fortunate on the material end to have one of the most amazing hardscape manufacturers around um, who very good with the support for us, new product for us. Um, so we can take that, get these customers, and they do such a good job at marketing their product. I don't have to sell their product. Their product sells them, it sells themselves. Um, so we get that uh, design done. Then we put them on the schedule. Um, once we're on, then it comes the mess. We, we make a mess in their backyard. Um, <laughs> and that's one of the things I'm trying to learn now is how to how to show them what's going to happen. Um, so one of my new things we're going to be doing and implementing is a video uh, that we're going to give them before right. and say, Hey, this is, this is what you got. This is what it's going to look like for the next month, two months, but this is the reward at the end and what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and I, I, it's usually the wife that halfway through <laughs> we're like, Oh my God, what did we do? There's mud in the house. There's it. But in two months, three months, that backyard is not going to have any mud in it. And, and they're going to have their dream backyard paradise. Um, you know, bring my team in. Um, very fortunate to have an amazing, amazing team. Uh, my, my main supervisor, Foreman, has been with me uh, going on 14 years. Nice. Uh, so it makes it easy where I give him a plan. I show up once or twice on the job, uh, show him what we want, and he can execute. I don't need to hold his hand. I don't need – he's very good with my customers. He knows how I expect him to talk to them, to treat them, Um they all love him. Um, so that makes my job a lot easier. Um, you know, I'll come out, I'll tweak a couple things. Um, when he's training new guys, he will, you know, express to them, Hey, you know, Ant's got a couple things. Uh, this is how we do it. And I know you might've been with another company that did it this way, but this is how we do it here. Um, and, and that's come a long way and set us apart from the competition. Um, and our customers see that, um, you know, uh, once we're finished, we always try and do the little things for them. Uh, we just finished a project. It was a small outdoor patio, but it, it had, you know, some columns and seating walls, a fireplace. 
um, in a fire pit. Um, the customer was away the last day we were there. I ran out and got some firewood. Um, I put it in that fireplace and in the fire pit, uh, went to the store. And the, one of the comments he made to me was, I can't wait to sit back there with my family and have some wine. So what did I do? I went right to the liquor store and bought two bottles of wine, uh, two new wine glasses. Um, they got home from, they were down at the Jersey shore for the day. They got home, walked into their backyard and saw that popped open about glass of wine and they lit the fire up. They didn't have to do anything. They just had to enjoy it. And that's, that's what I want as the final awesome. product for my customers, them to enjoy what we built for them. That's awesome. The wine. Yeah. Hey, that's so clutch too. Cause it, I mean that, that right there explains how much you're listening to the client right there as well, obviously, and listening to what they enjoy and so on, which is so important, which everybody should be keying in on. I've been trying to key in on that more and more each and every time I'm around them meeting with them and so on. But, you know, going back a little bit what you, with the messy backyards, we actually discussed this in the past, but you setting the expectation is so important and, and kind of going through the process before the process happens and telling people, okay, this is going to be a mess. The video is great because you're going to be able to showcase it and then you're going to be able to showcase the after result which is going to be amazing and this amazing new backyard that they're able to spend time with and their families with their families and so on too. So that'll kind of get over that hurdle of, Oh, this is going to be a mess. We should have never did this. So you're doing that's it's awesome because you're setting that expectation, but then you're finishing the project. And then you're also going into kind of that long-term relationship. Hey, we're here. We, we did this for you. Here's a bottle of wine. If you need us, here's our five-year warranty. Uh, we don't want to come back, but if we have to, we'll be here, you know, because we do the work right. So I love what you're doing there in the process. Done once, done right. Um, <laughs> you know, and when we do go back, 99% of the time, it, it's to take some pictures, uh, a catalog shoot, or they want more work done. Yeah. Um, you know, we've changed our process on the installation. Um, you know, the our industry has been held to some, you know, finally held to some standards um, where we didn't have much. Uh, there's uh, the interlocking concrete paving stone Institute. Um, they we're certified by them. They, uh, they recommend we do everything with some people call it quarry process. Some people call it modified. Uh, basically it's three quarter minus road base stone that go underneath these uh, projects and then screed with the sand. We still have guys that are 20 years ago using stone dust, um, which holds moisture, it moves. It's just like a no, no, uh, in our business, but there's still guys doing it. We've taken it a step forward. Um, we've gone to a hybrid technology now where we're doing it like a railroad bed is installed. So we have railroad beds all over the Northeast that do not move when we get a freeze thaw. Um, they're all built on a stone, clean stone base. Um, so we've gone to excavating out, um, putting in uh, a filter fabric soil separator, um, and then putting clean stone in uh, that does not hold moisture, does not hold water. Um, instead of sand, we're using a quarter inch number nine chip stone, uh, angular that can lock together that um, doesn't hold moisture, doesn't allow water to sit in there. Thus, we're not getting the freeze thaw. We're not getting the cycles that most of these projects are seeing. Um, we've been doing this for about five years and we have eliminated our callbacks to maybe one or two a year now. Um, awesome. And most of the time, that's just a little low spot when it rains, they're seeing a little water sit and and that's gonna happen in any project. Um, but as long as you address it, uh, fix it um, and keep your client happy, you're good to go. Um, but we're not seeing that, that popping of the pavers that we used to see. Um, one thing people didn't like about pavers was you get weeds in the joints. Um, the technology with that has come a long way. Um, we've worked with some really good manufacturing companies with the polymeric sands. Um, so we're able to use this sand now that, that has a, a polymer glue in it. When it's activated, it sets up like concrete, hard as a rock. Uh, yeah. You don't get the weed growth. Um, you get a little bit, I'm not going to lie. You, yeah. it's, you're going to get 5% compared to before 100% 
you were going to get weeds growing in those joints, uh, just sweeping regular sand. Um, you know, but as long as you do the maintenance the right way on these, um, they do require maintenance. It's just like your car. You've got to wash it. You've got to change the oil. Uh, it's like your house. You've got to clean the outside. Um, pavers, are, pavers and hardscapes are the same thing. Um, we need to take care of them. We need to maintain them. Uh, so that's another service that we offer um, is a cleaning and restoration program. Uh, mm -hmm. Cleaning basically for our our existing customers and sealing it, uh, putting a, a sealer on it that uh, protects it. So our outdoor living, a lot of these people are enjoying a glass of wine. They're, they're eating, they're cooking burgers and steaks. Uh, there's a lot of that juice, uh, barbecue oils and greases. Um, we can protect these pavers with a sealer. Um, and it's just in protecting their investment now. Um, so the technology has made uh, some upsells, but also made it more, reliable product for the customer at the end. Um, and, and that's what we need to sell them because uh, they're spending a lot of money on our, you know, when I first got into it, it was, it was two, $3,000 sidewalk. You know, now some of our sidewalks can, can be $15,000. Mm -hmm. um, but when you drive by a sidewalk that was installed by us, you're going to sit there and say, Oh, that's an Anthony group sidewalk. It's not, Oh, look at that sidewalk. It's nice. Oh no, that's Anthony group sidewalk. We, we can tell the detail in it. Um, it's different. We don't just do a little four foot walkway going up to your front door. Um, you know, one of the recent ones we did that stands out to me was uh, it, it could have been a four foot 20 by 20 foot. Um, we came off of their driveway with a nice six foot wide short walkway leading into a 12 by 12 square that then also led off of that to the front door. Um, we took the colors from the inlay and put them on the borders of the other one and the border color swapped in. So the detail uh, was there. We cut diamond shaped patterns with other colors into it. Um, took us an extra day just on the detail work. But when the customer came home and I had to tell this customer, let give me this opportunity to, to do a one of a kind sidewalk for you and trust me. Um, and they did. And, and she came home and she just said to me, I never, ever thought that, that would anything look like this in my front yard and just thank you. And she, to this day, I, I get comments from her on, on my, yeah. on my Facebook uh, and on my other projects, um, you know, how happy they are. Uh, and that, that at the end of the day, it's the best feeling. Love it. Yeah. I mean, that That's what it's all about too. You're obviously going all out, but even continuing that relationship with the, with the paver ceiling and so on too. Yeah, I was going to actually ask you about that, of how you're kind of going and extending things out with them, because obviously pavers, even down here, I need mine as we speak sealed, uh, you know, and pressure washed, because it is a maintenance thing. And how long does a typical sealer usually last? A couple of years, right? Uh, it all depends on that manufacturer. <clears throat> down in Florida, they, they do get beat up from the sun a yeah. little bit more, because uh, we've done a lot of research. Uh, one of the companies we were using is out of Florida. Um, we're not using them anymore. Um, we've gone to a company that invested a lot of money in the R and D aspect of, uh, of it. And they're also the company that makes our sands. Um, uh, it's called Alliance Gator. Um, and they, they are just, they have a support staff. Uh, I can actually pick up on my cell phone and talk to the chemist now, uh, <laughs> who, who is designing this stuff. Um, so when I, when, once that happened, I was like, I'll never go back to anybody. Like it, it's more than talking to a salesman. It's talking to the guy who is in a laboratory creating this stuff. So when I have a question or a problem, because this stuff is technical, if you don't do every step right, you can have major, major issues. Um, so to be able to pick up the phone and have that support is just amazing. Um, everybody in the company uh, stands behind it. They, the sands that we use, the the plastic edging, they've even come up now with a uh, synthetic base material. So instead of excavating down your one foot, putting the gravel and the sand in, now you're able to dig down four or five inches, um, screed your sand or your chipstone off, and then put a half inch mat. It almost looks like the mat you would use in a gym uh, mm -hmm. or for kids to play on. Um, but it has some holes in it for drainage. It's engineered. Um, and the pavers sit right on top of that. Uh, so with the product problems with sand coming up through the joints, um, stuff like that, you don't have those issues anymore. So this company is really taking it to the next level. Uh, and then it's given us a lot of new options to offer to our customers. Um, you know, I was uh, recently down in Florida um, 
at a trade show convention and talking to the hotel, they had major issues with the pavers in the front of the hotel. Um, they've had three people try and fix it uh, with no success. They've flown three different companies in uh, from across the United States to look at what the problem is. Um, and within an hour of talking to them and then their engineering team, um, we've come up with a solution and we might be going to Florida for our first project. Um, yeah, no, we want to expand and that that's going to be, you know, the, the, that, that Florida market for pavers and ceiling and cleaning yeah. is, uh, in it's, it's, a, it's a really nice market to be in, um, up here, we have long winters. Um, so, uh, to be able to maybe go down there during the winters and do some projects, um, might be, uh, an alternative for us, um, we, what we do do is we, uh, we have a lot of equipment and trucks. So we've, uh, actually have another company, uh, called Anthony winter services. Uh, and all we do is commercial snow and ice management. Um, we specialize in a lot of, um, grocery stores, retail malls, and up where we're at here in the Poconos, we have a lot of private communities. Um, not your typical HOA, like you'd find in Florida where there are condos, uh, and this is more subdivision houses, but they don't. They have to maintain their own roads. Uh, so we're helping out with the uh, with the plowing and the ice management. Uh, excuse the dog there. Uh, you know, trying to help out with the uh, snow and ice management, and it's really taken our winners uh, and made us uh, giving something to keep my guys. I don't lay my guys off in the winter. Um, we stay busy year round. Um, we'll also once the winter comes along, we we tend to. Uh, do a lot of stonework, interior, uh, fireplaces, and then we can, we'll try and schedule out a bunch that we can set tarps up uh, and canopies, tents, uh, and we put heaters in them. Uh, yeah. The ground's frozen, but the side of the building, as long as we heat that up and keep it heated, we're able to put veneer stone on all winter long. Um, my guys are too important to go and lay off, and a lot of guys lose key guys when they lay people off. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, I've always... Uh, they're my family. My, my employees are my family. Uh, they're not just uh, guys showing up to work every day. Um, I, I try and hold uh, hold them accountable. They hold me accountable. Um, and, and if I can give them a, a, a nice list, the landscape and hardscape construction industry has always been a revolving, you know, guys going from one job to another. Uh, we don't want that. Uh, we want we want to keep our guys so we can control the quality of our work that way. Um, my guys know what to ex what I expect of them, and they I know what they expect of me now. Um, you know, I've uh, I've really taken a lot of time this year to work on myself to be a better boss, to be a better employer, to be a better father, um, just to be a better person in general. Um, you know, so that has. Uh, Anything I can do to keep these guys going is uh, what we're going to do. So, you know, back to the the sealer in Florida, you know, we, we might be down, we might come down by you and uh, you might see us down there next winter. Um, might even see us down there during the summer. Cause if I go down, uh, I won't just do a part-time thing. We'll do something full-time down there. Um, you know, get good, get some great, good people down there. Uh, my parents live down there. Now I have some family down there. So I have some contacts, um, you know, I have some contacts now through uh, the great organization we're in together uh, mm -hmm. that you touched on a little bit before, RT Syndicate. Um, so, you know, there, there's people that I can hook up with um, and get down there and, and maybe just grow this company a little bit more. Yeah, well, come on down because we're just as busy as you are up there. So the more <laughs> I could use some more more uh help down here as well so it's 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 definitely yeah an opportunity down here and especially I, I love what you're doing as far as your employees too like you were talking about you know to maintain your guys not laying them off finding other opportunities for them too because it is it is important they are the core of your business they are what keeps you going they are family if they you treat them like family they're going to respond that way as well and and kind of take care of your vision of how you want the actual work done and completed. So, I, I mean, that's so important. One thing before, uh, cause we're getting towards the end here. Uh, I wanted to get into this question. Uh, what's some of your favorite projects? I've seen a lot of the stuff you're doing. Uh, what's some of the favorite projects that you have going on right now? Um, it, right now we have one of the most meaningful projects that I've ever been involved in. Um, we're doing a 20 year, uh, 20 years, 
911 memorial uh for a local firehouse um nice i uh i was on a running a tower or i was running a crawler crane in jersey city waterfront uh on 9 11 2001 um and watched both planes hit the towers um i uh immediately as people were being evacuated over from new york into new jersey we jumped on the first state police boat uh and i spent three and a half months working on the pile um so nine the 9 11 memorial we're building right now has just impacted me giving me a chance to give back uh it has so much meaning to it um i was fortunate enough uh in 2001 uh when i was still a union guy uh they i was asked to help build um i was helped, asked to help build one on the jersey city waterfront directly across from the towers uh made about 15 pieces of steel from the building um it was one of one person from every trade on my job so there was me as the operator uh there was a laborer there was an iron worker there was a plumber a pipe fitter uh a carpenter every trade had somebody involved in this um and it was it was a very amazing project to be involved and i i see on social media now people take pictures of this because it's main front down in jersey city and they pop up on my stuff and i'm like i'll dm them and be like hey can i use that picture um you know i, I built that memorial uh and, and people we get into a conversation because people are very interested in it um right now though um i was asked by uh by the chief of our local fire department uh who i've been friends with and uh, he knows uh he knows how much 9 11 meant to mm-hmm. me means to me um and he asked me and my company to build this uh, rather large uh, hardscaped memorial, uh, multi-level. Um, it has a, a, a beautiful brass statue of one of the fallen firemen uh, that we built podiums for. We have a piece of the steel in there. Uh, we built a podium for people to speak at uh, during the, uh, during the uh, memorial that's gonna be held on 9-11. Um, we have, uh, Couple, we have some set, uh, some special lighting that we put in design that look like the towers coming up out of the pavers. Um, the uh, there's a fire extinguisher going in there. Uh, it's all over my social media right now, and we'll be doing a final uh, a final presentation of it uh, in the next next week or two. We have very couple few details left. Um, there's a bell that we're gonna that we made uh, a custom stand out of a block and bluestone um so we're just getting the final details of that bell hung uh so they can ring that um i was also honored uh and asked to to speak at it um so that's going to be very difficult on me uh but it's going to be very gratifying at the same point um i'll be able to tell my story of, of the the day and weeks uh and what i was able to accomplish as a human down there, uh, what I, I never served my country in the military. Um, and, and sometimes I regret that, especially with what's going on in today's day and age. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the people that have are, are my biggest heroes, uh, my biggest role models. Um, but to be able to say that I went down there and I worked on that pile and I, you know, tried to save lives and find rescue people and just to do something for our country was uh was huge to me so this project is probably on my all-time top list of projects that we've completed my guys know how much it meant to me and they um they put their heart and soul into it um you know we have a couple different crews uh i was asked by crews that weren't going to be part of this project hey can can you put me over there for a day or two? I, I want to be involved in the project. Um, so it was my mission that every employee that worked for me got at least two days on that project so they could go and say, hey, we were part of it. I, it it's a fan. It goes back to being that family. Uh, you know, yeah. they they know what it meant to me and they came out and they they wanted to support me and they wanted to support our community. Um, and, and that that's what it's all about. Uh, so that that right now is my all time favorite project. We, we've got some that we've done over the years that that stand out, but nothing nothing like this project. Um, and, and I can't wait for it to be completed and show it off to the world. Um, yeah, it's amazing, brother. It's a, it's it truly is. And and for you to have done what you did on that day, I mean, we all remember where we were on that day. I, I mean, it was such a 
the terrible thing, obviously, that happened in, here in the United States, and then obviously dealing and seeing what's going on now and so on, too. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm the same as you. I mean, military people to me, I have the greatest respect for them. My dad, my grand, I almost went in the military personally, but my dad said, absolutely not. He was an ex Marine in Vietnam. So you can tell why he said, absolutely. My father not. served too. And that's, uh, you know, yeah. these, I went away to military school. I, I, when I was younger, I went to a Navy preparatory school. Um, but business was my passion at, yeah. when I was younger. Uh, now if I could look back at it, I, I would have went, um, you know, but, uh, my grandfather, uh, my grandfather didn't serve. My father did. Um, and, and I have so much respect for him and, and every vet, uh, yeah. every, men and women, um, that have fought for our country or, or haven't fought for our country, but were there for our country. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're my heroes. Yeah. Those are my heroes. I'm right there with you for sure too. Uh, you know, and going, and going back to your, the project you're doing, it is so important too, because that, that day obviously needs to be remembered. I mean, I can't believe it's already been 20 years, which is crazy, you know, to, it's like yesterday. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I can't believe Yeah, 20 years is it's nuts, but, uh, I, I have great respect for you on that project. I've been watching, obviously seeing it on your social media, everybody needs to go check it out. No doubt. You're going to deliver a great speech that day too. When they have you up there, man, so. it's, uh, they, they're, they're going to see a grown man cry. I'm about yeah. to cry right uh, now. I don't blame you. Just, uh, I think about it every day. Um, you know, the images I are still stuck in my brain. Um, but I'm so thankful that I was given the opportunity uh, to, to, to go and help out um, and, and the opportunity to build this, this project. And then the opportunity to, to talk about it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think talking about it helps the healing process. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, where I'm at in North Jersey, you know, I have a lot of friends and family that everybody you talk to here knew somebody. Um, so, so it's uh it, it, it's close to the heart. It's close to the people in my community um, where we're at. A lot of people retired after that and moved up here to the Poconos. Um, that was the first real big surge we saw up here. Uh, I wasn't up here yet. Um, I moved up here uh, in 06. Um, we got out of the city and came up here. Um, and then, you know, now with the COVID and everything, it, we've had that other surge, like we talked about before, um, you know, um, but it's impacted a lot of people that I know uh, personally. Um, and, and even when I talk to cl new clients, um, you know, everybody's got their story. Like you said, everybody remembers where they were that day at that time. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm, I'll never forget it. It's, uh, it's etched in my brain. It's, uh, and I'm just glad to be able to get back. You know, that, that, that's the honest part of it is, is I'm really happy to give back. Um, honored honored to be chosen uh to build this they could have had anybody any of the contractors build this um you know but they knew the meaning to me they knew that i was going to put you know blood sweat and tears into that project uh and and the the chief that asked us to uh to do this is also uh he's in charge of uh, he's the manager of the uh supply house where i buy most of my product um so he knows the dedication I have. He knows my crew. Um, he knew that there was, you know, nobody better to build it. Um, and, and it was, it was something nice to be able to volunteer, uh, volunteer the time, uh, the energy, um, and just the, the love into that project. Oh, uh, yeah. Amazing, man. And I got great respect for you for doing it and doing what you did too. So, um, I'm yeah happy that we talked about it. I'm sure people that are listening right now will be following following the journey as you build, bring that to life too, because it's is such an important thing. So, uh, switching gears here to wrap wrap up the show here. I always like to get into some personal questions. You and I can talk about you know the pay your what you're doing as far as hardscapes probably for. I always say this with every guest, another three hours, but, uh, due to show, show timing, we, we got to move and move here to the next part. So as far as personally, I always like to ask this question, uh, you know, you, you're built, you've built an amazing company. It continues to grow each and every day. What lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we can all apply to our own business or lives that'll help us grow? 
Um, I try and stay humble every day. I try and learn something new every day. I try and wake up and work my ass off every day. Uh, and something I teach my kid is never give up. Um, you know, um, if I can apply those things that I've learned in my life to my business, I'm going to, I'm going to go places, you know, that uh, I never thought of. Um, you know, I, uh, I, I, I enjoy, like I said a couple times here, I have a passion for this. So to bring that passion in my upbringing and my, my life uh, to the industry is, uh, has really helped. Um, and just, you know, every day I want to learn something new. I, I want to, I want it to, to have meaning every day. Um, I want to want to be an impact on somebody every day. Um, I want to be a great father every day. Um, you know, that, that's, that's what I strive for. Yeah. I, everything you said there is so important to staying humble. I mean, it's in just working your ass off the more you and learning something new every day. If we all apply that to our, our lives and it, you're going to have growth, you're going to have constant growth no matter what. And, and I mean, I see you doing it a hundred percent and the things you're doing and willing to make the sacrifice within your business, asking questions. Uh, we have that group to get, you know, a construction group asking questions for help. I, I personally do that as well, just to try and get better and grow and keep your company growing and you per your personal life growing and uh, you in all aspects of life. So um, love that answer, man. As far as I can remember 20 years ago, you drive down the road and you know, you see your competition, you look the other way. Yeah. Now we're on Zoom calls together and helping each other grow our businesses. It's, it's such an amazing time to grow a business um, yeah. because you can't do it by yourself. No. Um, the more people you put yourself in front of, the more people that are doing the same thing you're doing, you can communicate and touch base with and learn from. You're just going to make yourself a better person and that's going to that's going to create a better company. Yeah, yeah. definitely. A hundred percent. Cause I mean, everybody used to be so restraint from talking to other contractors and so on and, and re are resistant from doing it. And, and now it's like, you need that. I mean, us talking to each other and, and like, even with the show, I learn every single guest from, I learn from every single guest I have on the show because we all have that same mentality and same mindset that we all want to do better. So, and that's what this is all about. Let's uh, another question to wrap things up. Uh, I always ask about your past. Let's talk about your future. Where will we see Anthony in 10 years, 15, 20 years from now? Who will you be? Uh, um, I hope to be a better person than I am now. So, cause I want to keep growing. Um, you know, I hope to, uh, I I've changed my life a lot. Uh, I was always a get your hands dirty uh, in the field. Uh, the last year I've tried to become more of a businessman. Uh, so the next couple of years, that's what I'm going to be working on is becoming a better, better businessman in the office uh, and growing what I have. Um, what I've built has been built off a of passion. Now I need to grow the, the business end of it. Um, I've, uh, I've changed my life as far uh, as my health and fitness. Um, you know, a year ago, I smoked three packs of cigarettes and drank six Pepsis a day. Uh, now I go to the gym twice a day, or I do two workouts a day, a cardio and the gym. Um, and, and I'm eating healthier, uh, and I'm working on myself. Um, so those are the biggest things I want to continue to do. Um, uh, one of the reasons I did all this was I want to take my sons. I want to take, I want to have a grandchild and take, take him fishing. Um, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, I have a passion for the outdoors, uh, and for fishing. So I, I want to be around if I kept smoking and kept living the lifestyle I did, I wouldn't be here in, in 20 years for him. Um, so, you know, that uh, being a better father, being a better businessman, being a better version of myself, that that's the, the goals for me. Um, business wise, want to keep growing. Um, you know, we, uh, at some point, I would like to uh, my son wants to take the company over. Um, he's he's going to be 16 this month, uh, next month. Uh, I told him, you go to college and get a degree. Then you can come into the family business. Um, I don't care where he goes to school. I don't care what he studies. Uh, I'd like him to go engineering, construction management, something in our field. But I feel that, and it's not the, it's not the degree that's 
it's the the life experience of being yeah. away at college. Um, it has nothing to do with the education part. Um, uh, it, it's more of a life experience just because I think that'll make him a better person. Um, you know, he's uh, he has a lot of passion for what I do. Um, you know, he works with me every day in the summer. Uh, again, just like we talked about before, he he goes to football practice and then to work uh, <laughs> or he goes to work and then to football practice. So, you know, um, he uh, he's a tough kid um, and, and I couldn't be more proud of him. So just to become a better father uh, would be awesome. And then to, to kind of let him take the business over. And and then I would like to concentrate on my my winner company that I have uh, moving forward, uh, build that to where I am uh, just doing some management on that end. Uh, so when I get ready to retire, um, I can, I'll always work. I won't ever retire. Uh, my father said he retired 20 years ago. He's down in Florida, but it seems like he's up here uh, more than he's down there working in my shop, working on equipment. Uh, you know, so I get it from him. Um, my work ethic comes from my father. Uh from a little age, you know, young age. And I try and steal that out of my son also. Um, but uh, just hope to see a, a better, a better version of myself in the next uh, 10 to 20 years. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. And last question, this is what the show is all about. What exactly do people need to look for when hiring a hardscape company and why should they choose Anthony as their hardscape contractor of choice? Uh, they knew they need to look for the cus the client customer needs to look for someone who's going to do the job right the first time um you touched on it very briefly but there's too many guys there's a lot of guys out there that just aren't doing it the right way um so if if, if, if a, and that's with any job not a hardscape project building a home they, they've got to go to the guy who's going to start off right doing the foundation right um and, and then building that house out to their expectations um meeting the meeting the, the they, they need to look for someone who's going to meet their expectations when the, when the project is done um, and give them a quality project. Um, you know, uh, again, uh, the passion, the pride, the craftsmanship, um, that's what bring people to me. Uh, that's where I, that's what my clients are looking for when they hire us. Um, you know, they, they want the best product um, that they can get. Um, so, you know, they need to do their research, uh, like any, and, and not just in my industry, it's every construct, make sure the contractors got insurance, vet these contractors. Um, you know, I try and show my, I offer every customer to go see a job I did a year ago, a job I did five years ago. And if they want, they can go see a job I did 10 years ago because we stand behind those projects. Um, those are one of my best selling points. When I can say, you wanna see a job I did 10 years ago? They're like, really, you'll show us? That? You're damn right I will, because we're proud of it. Um, you know, so you need you need to be transparent with them. Um, communication, like we talked about, I, I'm getting better at that. I wasn't great at telling them every step of the project. And that that's something now that uh, these customers should be looking for. Someone that's going to go above and beyond and explaining to you the processes, the procedures, um, the material selections, um, knowing what materials you're getting. Uh, materials can range. Uh, again, my manufacturer is, is a made in the USA family run company with uh, some of the best culture uh, I've seen in a, in a company. Um, you know, they remind me of another company I deal with that I'm sure we both know of who prides himself on their culture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so to see them uh, give me the best product out there, especially in these times where they're have, you know, everybody is six to eight, 15 weeks out on product material. I know you've talked about your pilings um, and not being able to get, you know, my company has done things that the other ones aren't. They, uh, instead of trying to keep that vast array of everything out there, they've gone to their popular colors so they can produce more product uh, and keep, get the product on the ground. Um, look for the contractor in these times. It's going to order the material ahead of time. Um, get it, get it procured, uh, get it, you know, uh, out onto their site. So when we're ready to go there, we have that material. We're not waiting. Oh, you're three more weeks. You're four more weeks. Like, Hey, materials coming. Let's go. Let's get on it. Um, you know, so, uh, that client, as long as they're, they're vetting the contractors, um, and, and they can vet me all day long. And, and that's what I love. Um, you know, makes me a better, a better person, a better company, um, and, uh, a better product.
Love it, man. This, yeah, this has been awesome. That that last question too, right there. I mean, that could be the whole show right there. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate I mean, it, man. Yeah. It's, uh... yeah, that was that was awesome. I mean, you're 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 spot on to just vet your contract, and especially in times like today too, and and have somebody that's ahead of all this. I mean, we're we're in a market now where we're constantly having to pivot. We're constantly, as a contractor, having to get ahead of all this, figure it out, but also communicate with the customers too. I mean, I feel I, I was joking with somebody yesterday. I feel like a shrink because I'm constantly on the phone with my customers, kind of telling them, "Okay, this is what's going on. This is how it's going to be," you know. But getting ahead of it so they're not just sitting there and doing those touch points that you're supposed to throughout the process too and, so. and i and listen i can't keep every one of them happy i have one or two that are yeah that are why aren't my pavers done yet and and i i'll talk to them i'll explain it to them but i'll also let them communicate with the, the district distributor yeah. um and that seems to really help uh and and ease them down a little bit um you know uh you, you hit it spot on communication. Um, that's another thing I've learned. Um, I wasn't great with that five years ago, um, but to become a better businessman and to, to run a company the right way in this age, uh, especially yeah, with, yeah. with social media, you know, we talked about social media a lot for the positive ways, but if you don't do the right thing, social media can kill you, yeah. uh, can put you out of business tomorrow. A um, hundred good things said about you, one bad erases it all. So yeah. You know, just do right by that customer. Um, and, and if they vet you, you know, they should um, they should understand. I mean, I'm pretty sure at this point, everybody realizes this is what's going. It's not just construction materials. I mean, we couldn't get toilet paper for how long? So, you know, uh, people understand it. Um, they've been, like I said, I've only had one or two and, and we've been able to communicate with them and, and, you know, put them at ease and and let them know, hey, we're coming and your product's coming. It's just going to take a little bit longer. Yeah, man, exactly. We're, I mean, this has been amazing. And we're like, obviously, I want people to check out your projects and so on and, and look at what you're doing on the 9-11 Memorial and what, hopefully you'll post your speech up there too. Uh, where can people connect with you and find you? Um, I would say the best place is going to be Instagram. It's where I interact the most. Uh, Anthony Group Hardscapes. Um, and then uh, on Facebook, Anthony Group Hardscapes. Uh, um uh, my website it which listen i don't have a great website uh it's there just so when people google me they see it uh i put everything on the ig uh but www.anthonygrouphardscapes.com uh and then also uh, i have anthony group winter service or anthony winter services both on instagram and facebook uh give that give that one a look at too um you know we're just as passionate about the snow as we are about the pavers um you know so um you know, we put ourselves out there where uh, all our projects get featured, um, you know, and, and that 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 911 speech will definitely be up there. Um, we're even going to put this up there, uh, our podcast today. You know, we, we want people to see this. Uh, I explained to you, I was really, really nervous about doing this. Uh, it's kind of my first public putting me out there speaking type of event. And uh, I had a blast today, Bill. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, you know, you've helped me spotlight my business a little bit, the industry, which uh, is an up and coming industry, um, you know, and, and people are starting to, to, to invest a lot more money in it. Um, so to be able to, to showcase myself and our product, um, I, I appreciate your time uh, and the consideration of choosing us is uh, the hardscape contractor you wanted to put on your podcast. Yeah, no, I appreciate you, man. More than anything, I'm honored to have you on. I appreciate the time. You did good. Uh, first podcast, you killed it. So I, I really do appreciate it. And and I appreciate like everything you talked about. I a ton of good info. We can go on for hours, like I talked about too. You know, um, but everybody that's listening. Thank you as always. One only ask for one thing. Obviously, review this podcast five stars only. That's all I accept. Write a comment on there as well, and uh, obviously share it with somebody. Also, friend, family, whoever you can share it with, spread the word. Thanks everybody for listening, and I'll see you guys on the next one.